okay boys welcome to a new video of my youtube channel this one is going to be a bit uh, different as you can see in the topic i'm gonna talk about uh, game plan and i just felt that it's something that uh, i need to explain maybe a bit more in depth because it's something i mention a lot on the on the desk i also think it's it's uh, really important but uh, don't really <laughs> i'll keep making the that's the helix video with more uh, strategic and, and tactical stuff and so on so let's get to it right game plan what i mean by that is when i say a team it's uh, obvious that a team had a clear and uh, good game plan coming into this one i basically mean that coming into the game they had a general idea of how they want the game to to run right and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so to give you an example let's say you know uh, maybe luminosity uh, they're really good at it or on, on train on the t side if they went pistol then <clears throat> first gun round they put some pressure towards the b bomb say maybe they go for a for a fast b take so they can uh, force the cities to play with two players in the b bomb side so that you know next gun round they can maybe go for an a split with smokes win around there then maybe they go for an outer rush or, or fake an, uh, an outer smoke strat and go B again and so on and so on. The point behind this is you do something, obviously you want to win the round, right? But that's, you know, uh, thinking short term, right? There's also the long con. The long con is by winning a round, sometimes maybe not even by winning the round necessarily, but just by doing something, you force you basically bait or force the opposing team to react to it right but here's when where the game plan things come into come into motion right with a good game plan you're already expecting this so you're one step ahead you know okay so we did this they're probably going to react by doing that so we can switch and do something else right maybe let's say on dust 2 a team wins the pistol on the t side wins the <clears throat> anti force by round wins the first gun round but doing whatever right and a lot of teams after you know being down 5-0 they're gonna go for an eco and then they go for a double a wp setup right it's something that's fairly common so then as a you know in-game leader you may already have a plan for this so you, you're, you're probably already expecting this so hence you should have a strategy exactly for that right because that's what's gonna allow you to win the round consecutively if you win a round then then probably the next round, cities being down 6-0 or, or even 7-0, they're probably going to go for an aggressive push, right? So maybe you, you expect that and you see how it can snowball, snowball. Obviously, rarely do we see games that are, you know, have a really good tea house or, or things happen like this. It's, it's also, you know, a matter of uh, breaking the opponent's economy and so on. But it's something you should have in theory, right? You should have... Plan A is we win 15-0 on the T side, but then you should also have plan B. Plan C, okay, we're, we're losing some rounds, we have to eco. Look at what the opposing team is doing, how do we counter that? What are we supposed to do if they keep, you know, pushing aggressively uh, and so on? And the thing is, you know, we have a lot of tournaments with uh, only tier 1 teams and, you know, there you rarely see things like this happen, right? Because they're all, you know, really, really well prepared. They have great individual players who can, you know, win rounds by themselves at some point as well. And also, it also comes down to the to the map pool, right? It's not easy to have like a clear and, and good game plan and be ready for all these different situations on the six maps you in theory would have to play because in best of threes you can only beat the one map. I think right now the team with the best map pool is probably Navi. They don't play cash at all. Inferno is not a really strong map for them, but the other five maps I think they're pretty good on. So that's why when we talk about, let's say, Navi playing mouse, we say, oh, Navi has a, a clear advantage when it comes to the map pool, because they can even, you know, have the luxury after vetoing cash, maybe in the second phase, veto something like Dust 2, which is a good map for them, but, you know, it's the best map for mouse or, or, or something like that. That's why we say about teams about uh, teams like Maus and Dignitas, right? These guys have to widen their map pool to really break through into the top one. Because when they are forced to play, let's say we saw Dignitas play Inferno at the major qualifiers. And you can see that, you know, it wasn't nearly 
as good as their cobblestone is or or even mirage you see they were they had uh, you know uh, some ideas here and there but they were struggling to execute that stuff uh, properly and and that's also something that's really important it's not always about the calls right the, a call can be good and, and bad obviously but it's also about executing that call so um, let me give you an, an example here maybe cash so let's say that the cities are playing the one three one setup right three players with rifles towards mid maybe even a two a wps one on a one on b and you know if you if you're on the t side and you make a, a call okay guys let's let's fight for mid early that's probably it, it can work you know things can always work you know someone can uh, get, get a couple of good shots off but in theory it shouldn't work because the cities are putting a lot of emphasis in that area they're gonna throw smokes molotovs grenades and so on and you know th that's the point of their setup right they want to get that early mid control so you're probably gonna lose that round and in that case the call itself was bad right but uh, i mean in, hi in hindsight obviously but uh, you know you can also make a good call let's say in, in that case you you in the same situation you maybe go for a call okay let's throw a smoke towards the throw smokes towards the a bomb site or just explode towards the a bomb site with a pop flash so we can you know overwhelm the, the one guy that is there so he can get maybe one kill and get traded you see that's a good call so you get the plant but then you still maybe lose the round or someone misses a flash or a smoke and that opera gets three kills maybe so you see there the execution was just it was poorly executed, right? The, the idea was good. So that's also something you need to take into account, right? Maybe even on, on cash, you get mid control as T, right? And then that's all fine and, and dandy getting mid control on uh, cash or, or Mirage, for example. But if you don't have a good exit strategy after that, so okay, you have mid control, there's maybe a minute left, 50 seconds, 40 seconds, and you don't have a good uh, exit strategy, whether it's, whether it's uh, towards A or B, you're still going to lose the round and then, you know, having mid control didn't help you much in the end. And these are also some, you know, you need to also take into account that, you know, sometimes uh, you're not going to have a, a, an optimal buy, right? People are going to have maybe Galil's tech nines. Maybe they won't have all of their nades to do the execute you practice or go for the strat you practice. You need to adjust for that as well. You also need to take into account that not all of your players know all of the smokes. People only generally know the smokes they they throw they throw themselves, right? Also, players sometimes just fuck up. <laughs> Shit happens. They miss a smoke, miss a flash, and so on. So obviously, you can't prepare for all of this. But that's why a game plan is a, a really a general thing, right? In theory, it should work like, like this, this, and this. And some probably, you know, it will most of the time it will not work like that. But you have, you know, a plan B, a plan C, you have uh, ideas of how you can uh, adjust for that. Right on the on the city side as well, maybe an overpass is a good example for this. Right. So maybe you are going uh, aggressively early on your city side, pushing either long or toilets or having your opera go for a pick or maybe sending an opera towards a uh, link, whatever you, you take your pick. There's a lot of things you can do on your city side. And by doing this, you basically force your opponent to be more uh, methodical, getting map control, or you maybe just force them to group up and, 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 and push early, maybe go for a B rush or something like that, right? And then you can just, after doing that for a round or two, you just play super passively, right? All the way back, maybe just have your upper hold a couple of passive corners, defensive uh, defensive angles, right? And, and by doing that, you force them to spend their time, you force them to spend their nades, and if they spend a lot and you don't spend anything, basically when they have to do an execute it's going to be with limited resources and maybe you still save the smoke or a molotov and you know sometimes that can just uh, you know completely catch them off guard maybe a good example is maybe inferno b bomb site as ct right you know they may be going for a late b execute because they spent a lot of time getting map control but that b player still has a smoke and if he smokes off that one choke point no matter how many grenades or players that these have it can still be a be a slaughter for them right a good uh, you know that's why we say that navi luminosity you know teams like dignitas g2 are good tactical teams because this is fairly obvious 
with them, you know, it's, all, it's clear in their play, let's say, um, yeah, Lum Lum Luminosity on train, right, with, with that uh, B pressure and, and, and so on, but um, I also think that this, uh, the baiting of reactions, right, it's not as easy between tier one teams because it's not just, oh, let's go A two, two times and then we'll go B, you know, that's, that's not that's not much of a of a baiting of anything but you're baiting them to do small things right you're baiting them to be more aggressive uh you, you're maybe baiting them to be more passive depend on what you're doing and then you have a, a clear idea of if you manage to do that what are you gonna do in return right how are you gonna win the round by managing to do that and this is how this is when we see teams have like a 7-0 uh, start, you know, after winning pistol and so on, or, or winning uh, five rounds in a row, right? It's it's always by not just out taming, but also outsmarting your opponent, right? You, you made a good read, you, you made a good guess of what they're going to do, you were prepared for it, and then you, <laughs> you did something to counter it, and that's what uh, won you the round in the end, right? So yeah, this is basically uh, what I what I wanted to to talk about to maybe clear it up when I say because I you know listening uh, looking back at the wads it does sound a bit too general maybe maybe not a lot of people know exactly what I what I mean by this and it's something that will maybe be brought up even more when you know tier one teams are playing tier two teams you know when when you see teams struggling on, on a map they're not uh, practiced uh, well enough right so yeah thanks for watching and uh, see you soon